So Calvert Jones is an entrepreneur and an amazing self-taught visual artist from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I had the privilege of going to St. Vincent a couple of times, never visited any of the hundreds of islands in the Grenadines. And he describes his trademark style of artwork as tropical realism. And we're going to find out what exactly that means. He's with us now. Morning, friend. Welcome to Smile Jamaica. It's morning time. Welcome to Jamaica. How are you? Good morning, Neville, and good morning to all the viewers of Smile Jamaica. It's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. It is our pleasure. Um, let me start there. What is tropical realism? Tropical realism is a, is a brand, is an art style that pretty much encapsulates the Caribbean experience. So all the vibe, all the passion, the intensity, the lifestyle that we have and we know as Caribbean people is what I attempt to incorporate in terms of the not just subject matter, but the way that the brush strokes flow, the way that the colors are depicted, the boldness and the intensity is all about our lifestyle as Caribbean people. Where did that come from, um, Calvert? Because again, I said you were self-taught, which is just amazing to me. I mean, you're self-taught. I mean, you just sit down and look at something and say, I could do this. What does that mean? It's, it's a combination of, of my experiences coming up in beautiful islands of St. Vincent, 32, um, 32 keys and, and islands. Um, going, to, going to school, from a little boy, the commute was pretty much a journey of seeing the bays, seeing the, the, the market scenes on the sides of the road, um, the activities of the fishermen, everything like that. And I always, this was always a part of me that I, I attempted to capture in my art. I didn't always paint this particular style. It was before just traditional realism that had the natural colors. But as I, as I, matured as an artist and as somebody who had experienced life in other Caribbean islands. I thought that, you know, there was so much that connected us as Caribbean people. And the, the way I was expressing my art was similar to photography and I needed to evolve beyond that process and incorporate the passion and the vibe. And I started to do that through the use of color psychology and the use of how I would portray the colors and the boldness. Yep. So, that, that, is, that is how that basically came to fall. I've, I've seen your stuff and it is absolutely amazing. Can you remember the first one you did that you sat down and said, yes, man, I am ready for the road now. Can you remember? That was actually one with Fidel Castro and it was bought by the prime minister and gifted to him. And to my amazement, when the prime minister came back, he had a press conference and he said, Fidel Castro wants to meet me. No, no. At the time when I, I, I transitioned to this particular type of art, it, it stopped my sales because it was a it was a bold move and a risky move for me because persons were but the, the, at the time the market was used to the natural colors. So you 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 must imagine that at that time there would have been a, a, a null period of sales and it was. But that that movement for me was a very encouraging one and it it to this day has been one of the, the pivotal moments in my career and pushing me forward into that direction. Yep. I said when you looked at it, that was the first one. What did you think um, when you looked at it and realized, uh, yes, man, this, this is something that you know, maybe people will like and think, what went through your mind? Did you say, I am here now, I reach, uh, all right. What did you think? Not that, I, that I, not that I arrived because to me still the journey continues and you know, Caribbean journey, you know, there's not a start and an end point. Um, the journey as well encapsulates different aspects and challenges in our society that I hope to convey in my art and I hope to address in my art, some of which I, I believe we may, we may um, address a little later. However, with this particular piece, when I completed it and looked at the colors and looked at the impact that you get looking at that piece, it, it echoed what the subject was about. So I, I realized then and there that I was able to capture what I imagined to be possible. Yeah, you mentioned color psychology. What do you mean by that? Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's the feelings you get with certain colors that are used and how they're used. And it is, it is core in branding and marketing. For instance, every fast food joint has a combination of red and yellows in it. And the combination triggers excitement and passion. So that resonates with hunger. And when you consider things like beverages, drinks, and so on, you will tend to see a dominance of, of blues and cooler colors. And this balance is what I tend to utilize in my art to create a specific effect and a specific tone. Wow. So either, either if it's nurturing, if it's aggressive, if it's energetic, 
that's displayed and, and um, echoed by the colors used and where they're positioned. Well, I just learned something, and thanks for that. Now, as we are entering the Easter season, uh, your take on Da Vinci's Last Supper, but you named it something else. What did you name it, and, and, and what, what did you write or think about it when you were painting that one? Right, so th that's an adaptation of Da Vinci's, like you said, The Last Supper, and I name it The Last Colonial Meal because, to me, it's uh, while the characters are, are physically and visually represented there, and you could see them, the meaning and the, 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 the interpretation of the painting is also allegorical because the characters that were chosen not just represented who they were and what they stood for, but the meaning who passed those characters in who were from a range of, 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 of most of them have, have died already. But a lot of the issues, the social justice issues that we are experiencing now are still very present in that painting in terms of what they stood for because these particular characters were all proponents of persons who would have dealt with in some form or fashion either, either fighting against the status quo, fighting against imperialism, colonialism, slavery, and it's a Western society concept. So this painting basically encapsulates the struggle of the Western man to, to, to self-determination and to chart the way forward for society. Who gets the middle seat? I'm sorry? Who gets the middle seat? That middle seat is, is most persons assume it's Jesus, but it's not. But that's, again, a challenge to our narrative fallacy because the way it's presented as a white figure, immediately we think it's Jesus. However, the, the, the actual attire, you can see it's a British army general. He has a sword and he has a Bible and he has 30 pieces of gold at the front of him. And that represents the pillars to which colonialism and imperialism, for instance, would have taken their, their stance in in shaping our societies and um, even in the case of how the practice presented with white long hair, um, how we perceive religious figures, how white supremacy and how whiteness has, sh uh, has been used to, to make us feel inferior or to, to project a certain um, psychological, psychological impact on our societies. These are all things that came out and, and are all represented by that central figure. Yeah, final question. Um, usually when I speak with musical artists, I usually say they make an album and I said, which song you like? And they say, well, you know, they're like my kids and you, you know? So please don't tell me that uh, unless you, you feel you have to. You have a favorite painting? It will be this one. It will be this. I also did one recently of Marcus Garvey. Um, and Marcus Garvey to me is a very powerful figure, of course. Yeah. And yeah. He, he represented... Um, you know, how black unity should be and what we should do to, to unite and move forward. Because, you know, it, it's not an individual thing. It's the race that we, we have to, 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 to run as, as in a post-colonial society to advance ourselves and our families and our economic position it has to be one of unity. And this is echoed in various paintings that I do. All right. Fantastic to meet you. Outstanding work. Um, obviously, Thank you very much. Um, to, to teach yourself all of this, you're obviously an um, amazing person, and I, I hope I will get to see more of your stuff. Stay safe, say hi to the folks in St. Vincent and the Grenadines for us, and God bless you. All right? Will do, will do. Come yeah. back soon. Yeah, man. Calvert, Have a good one. Calvert, Thank you very much. Calvert Jones, entrepreneur and self taught artist. We move on, folks. Can women and men just be friends? Well,